Jeremy Weiss here. We're here with Alec Nelson. He's founder and CEO of Vacuum Spot. It, now, just to tell you a little bit about Vacuum Spot, it's a vacuum supply company that generates over $1 million in sales. It's been in business since October 13th, 2010. Now, just to give you an idea, they migrated from their shed at their house to a full warehouse in just 12 months. And you know, I have Alec here because he's the perfect person to talk about sales. He did door-to-door -door vacuum sales and it's, it, that's a tough business. Now, we get a lot of comments from people. They have tons of ideas. They don't know where to start. Maybe they have a current product or service and they're trying to get traction in sales, but it's not growing as fast as they want. Or, you know, there's sometimes that we just fear failure and embarrassment with family and friends. So, Alex is going to talk about how we go from having that idea to making our first sale in dollar and beyond. All right. And I always like to include a fun fact, Alec. And a fun fact about you, no one would ever guess this, that he's so obsessed with vacuum cleaners that he actually has a Kirby vacuum cleaner tattoo. And if that's not enough to boot, he convinced another guy to get one too. Right, Alec? Right, Alex. This this is true. Although I really would like to say that it's not because I'm so obsessed with vacuum cleaners, it's okay. it's because I believed I was going to get rich off vacuum cleaners. I see. I see. Okay, I, I stand corrected. Um, now, first thing to start off with, tell us how did you come up with the idea? You know, with vacuum cleaners. Oh, look, sheer sheer desperation. Um, I had finished up with a job rather abruptly, shall we say, um, and I was going through the newspaper. I needed a job that not only could I start right now, but I could get money that week. And um, selling Kirby vacuum cleaners was about the only one that I could start within two days and get paid within three or four. So it literally desperation. I just needed money real bad. Where did you see that? Uh, I was... I was literally sitting at home um, in the Saturday newspaper in the classifieds. It was talking about, yeah, earn heaps of money real fast. All the ads that everybody avoids. And I'm like, yeah, no, I do. I need money real fast. And so I called him. And um, the guy on the end of the line was an American fellow telling me, yeah, if, if I could sell something, he could make me lots of money. So I'm like, I'm your guy. Sign me up. So, you know, we go from that and obviously – you're a good salesman, you've done really well, but what was the moment when it felt nearly impossible to get a customer a sale? <laughs> um, there was one time I was out on a, um, away from town, like away from home. Um, I, was, I was in, I'd had a, a reasonable run, but then it had gone cold. Um, I had four demonstrations lined up that day and that was about as many as you could do. Um, I'd done two in the morning and there was no sale there. And um, I called up the third one so I could come around and show them this wonderful machine. And uh, I got no answer. So that dem had um, cancelled on me. And then to make it a real kick in the guts, um, the next phone call I took was from a customer who I'd sold a vacuum to uh, that day or the day before. Sorry, the day before. And they were cancelling it. They were returning it. Oh. So all of a sudden, not only had I not sold a vacuum that day, I was actually taking a refund which was going to cost me 600 bucks so how do you so yeah how do you turn around from that like that day like you just you feel down ah uh, look you know what I, it's happened numerous times it's that's just sales but honestly my my preferred approach is have a bit of a sook um what's a sook for us americans a so oh, sook um a, a bit of a cry like oh. um you know get angry um and then just get serious about how just actually a bit of positive mental um, affirmation and just say, no, 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 this is temporary and I need not only to do it, but I need to get back on that horse right now because now I had to make one extra sale just to get back to where I was earlier mm. on that day. Um, so I didn't sell anything that day, but the following day I got my sale back. I see. So just let it all out and then from there... Yeah. Just reinforce, just it's just temporary, and get back on your feet. Okay. Yeah. Well, that honestly, that one sale, it, it was a really bad day, but that's all it was. It wasn't right. the end. Yeah, that's a good way of looking at it. What's the been the biggest turnaround sale? 
where you you thought there's no way this person's buying and they end up anyways <laughs> okay so it didn't even start out as a sale. I've had um, a number of businesses and um, at the time I was working on a repair business um, wishing that I was um, selling big vacuum cleaners because repairs, you know, you make a hundred bucks each go and um, vacuum cleaners, you, you might sell a big one and get 500. So I had, um, I in my own mind, I had been helping this lady for weeks. She'd had numerous problems with her vacuum and she was coming back and initially um, she was grateful that I was helping and doing the repairs. At the end, though, she'd she'd had it fail on her twice, and then she'd come back to me for the third time, and she's like, "Look, this vacuum is broken again. Not only am I annoyed with the vacuum, now I'm annoyed at you because you seem not to be able to fix my vacuum." And uh, I said, "Look, I totally understand where you're coming from. I want you to remember, though, I didn't sell you this vacuum. I'm only fixing it. If it was me." Honestly, I would have sold you this vacuum, and it was the most expensive one I could get my hands on at that time, um, which was an Electrolux um, Ultra One, is what it was called, um, and that was a thousand dollar vacuum. I said, "Look, seriously, you've already put um, some money into the repairs. I think the best thing you could possibly do is cut this off and just buy a new vacuum, and you're going to be very happy with the vacuum, and you're going to love me too." And in actual fact, that lady bought that vacuum. And she was very happy with it, and that was an awesome turnaround because she was ticked off. I love that. What a good story. That's perfect. Now, go from that, and how did you get your most pivotal or biggest connection sale that built your confidence? Um, so there was this one time with our current website, with our current business, Vacuum Spot. Um, we had previously focused on um, bags and parts and filters and all that sort of stuff and we were just getting into um, some bigger sales like some heavy gear for, for industry um, and we had just started selling some bags that were suited for um, asbestos removal so a very specific industry and um, this guy called me and he's like look yeah I've bought the bags off you before um, you've been really great and uh, I'm interested in a machine trouble was I knew absolutely nothing, nothing at all about this machine. And I said, okay, cool. Can you tell me about what you're using, how you're doing it? And so I spent five minutes listening to exactly what he needed. And I really had to listen because half the words I didn't even truly understand. Um, I then turned back around to the company, um, which was Neil Fisk. And I said, okay, I have got this dude on the phone uh, or, you know, waiting for me to call him back. And he's talking about this, this, and this. Can you please tell me what it is that he wants and tell me why yours is better? And literally, on the phone, I, I, I was talking to him one minute, I was talking to them the next, and I spent probably 20 minutes, and they really had to dumb it down for me because I knew nothing about hazardous materials. Anyway, I called this guy back, and I'm relaying the information. And it didn't end there. I had to call Nilfis back and get more information. But that, that day... I sold one of those hazardous machines, and it was a seriously expensive machine. Like it was three and a half thousand dollars. Wow! Um, I, I'd, I'd never sold one that dear, but that contract, that guy, he actually called me back a month later and said, "Yeah, okay, I need two of those machines and twenty packets of bags, and each packet of bags is a hundred bucks." Um, so within a month, he'd spent you know three thousand on the first order, seven thousand on the second order. And it just blew, went from there. But honestly, I felt like such a fraud because I, I have never even seen a sheet of asbestos, let alone know how to actually clean it up. But we have ended up becoming friends. And um, that has really been a, a core part of our business moving yeah. on. I mean, it sounded like you learned the needs as much as you possibly could to give them what he wanted. So, But we all kind of, I think we all feel like that initially if we don't know everything that we kind of feel like a fraud for not completely knowing 100% what they're talking about or what they need to buy. So, Oh look, that is so true and honestly in between the phone calls I said to my wife, wow, I am, I'm honestly scared here. I, I don't know enough if he asked me too many of the questions but the fact was I just had to call the company back and just right. say, hey, <laughs> I need to check on this and it worked out. It was awesome. Yeah. So going from that, the you know a real pivotal 
connection sale that built your confidence. What's a pitfall we should avoid that you wish you would have avoided? <laughs> um, look, I've got a bad habit of letting my imagination run away with, um, uh, well, my money in this particular case. I had a, um, we'd had this one off sale. It was the first time that we'd, this was in my retail store. Um, we had had this one off sale, which I didn't really plan for. And um, it had the same level of, ex of advertising as many of other, other sales. And this one weekend, we smashed records. Like we sold literally everything in the shop. I don't even know why it worked so good, but it did. Um, and then it was so good that our, like the, the franchisee boss, he said, okay, look, let's, um, let's do it again. And in fact, the CEO of the company rung me up and said, wow, your guys are doing so awesome. Um, and he offered me a whole other store. Like he said, hey, you know, would you like to start another store? And I'm like, no, 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 let me just do this. Anyway, a month or so later, they said, all right, we're going to do that sale again. And I am like, okay, that weekend we did $60,000 in sale. Wow. This weekend, I am going to do 80 or 90. And look, honestly, to give you an idea, we used to turn over about $15,000 a week. So th that sale was so amazing. I ordered so much stock. Like we had pallets and pallets and pallets. In the middle of my shop, I'd actually erected this vacuum tower. Um, and it was freaking huge. Like you've never seen anything like it. Anyway, I ordered all this stock and the sale just didn't happen. Um, we did the same advertising. I'd put on, it made sure all our staff were on board. I'd done everything that I possibly could. And then it just, it was a fizzer. Um, and I tell you what, I learned a bit of a lesson then because I couldn't pay for that stock for about a month. I was gradually ringing up the supplier and just saying, hey, look, you know, I've only done this much in sales. I need a little bit more time. And they were like, seriously, you've got to pay for that stock. Um, and that ended up being a real lesson for me because I do have a tendency to... Um, <laughs> Your eyes got wide. So chickens. Yeah. yeah, they do. They do. What so that, that is a pitfall for me. <laughs> that's a good one too. You know, that's, you know, something we fall into, you know, like you see it work and you just want to replicate it and replicate it and replicate it. So, you know, it's a learning experience. So we'll learn from, from that from you. Um, what's one thing that the audience should do right now to start getting their first sale or to get traction, Alec? My honest belief in this one is, is not my words. Um, they're from Zig Ziglar. Um, but um, if you help enough other people get what they want, then you in turn will get what you want. And I think the best way to think about this is not so much as about the, the, the product that you're selling, so the vacuum or the pen or anything like that. You really honestly have to ask, what does this customer need? Because that's what they're going to buy for. So no matter how flashy or great your vacuum or your radio or anything that you're selling is, you have to find the customer's need. That's how you're going to do it. So what was the time where you found the customer's need that may not have been obvious? Uh, I had a, um, a lovely old lady um, <laughs> in my shop and uh, she had money. Like she had a lot of money because she had bought um, a very expensive vacuum from another shop uh, and she was telling me about this you know she she had this vacuum and she just wasn't happy with it and um, she'd actually bought another vacuum some six weeks later so she had two vacuums already very expensive and she's telling me look you know I'm just not happy uh, and I'm like okay and so my first reaction I saw the dollar signs I thought right I am gonna sell her the most expensive thing we have in the shop um, and I'm gonna make my little cut and I'm gonna be very happy but as the conversation continued, I actually found out that her problem wasn't really going to be answered by my expensive one. Her main problem was that she had back problems. Hmm. And uh, she was finding the other machines were just simply too heavy. And it wasn't that – I don't even know how to describe it. Like it, I, I, She probably would have bought the expensive one. Let me say that because um, it wasn't the money. But in the end, what I had to find – was the outright lightest thing that she could maneuver hmm. and get the job done. So I ended up selling her um, a machine that I really believed and she loved it. It, it was um, partially self-propelled. Um, to say it was self-propelling 
is overstating it, but that's how the manufacturer sold it. Um, she bought that vacuum and she loved it because she could actually do it herself without um, giving it to the cleaning lady or any of her help. She mm -hmm. could do it herself. And um, she ended up over the years sending so much business to us because um, we'd done the right thing by her. Right. And um, yeah, that was a feel good sale. That's a great one. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. What's, what's some of the tools? I'm curious about this. What's some of the tools or software or systems you use in your business uh, for sales or to keep track? Okay. Um, so I think the two that I use most frequently are um, analytics. Um, we can keep an eye on what is being searched on our site. So um, mm -hmm. by watching what people type into our search bar, um, we can see where the demand is. And we can, because we've got access to every vacuum supplier there is in our country. Um, so whether you've got an Electrolux or a Kirby or a Miele, it doesn't matter. Um, but the trouble is, we've got so many possible products. Like, um, we could list anything, but we don't know if it's going to be successful. So by watching what people type in and seeing if we've got it, we can look, okay, out of the last month, there have been 10 times that somebody has searched this particular item, and if we list that, chances are we're going to sell it. Um, so analytics, I just love analytics. So you use um, Google Analytics, okay. Yep, and you link it up to your website, and that just gives you so much awesome data. And that instead of just guessing, and look, I've got a lot of industry experience, I reckon when I have a guess, it's pretty good, but analytics is foolproof. Yeah, you never know, yeah. Yeah. Um, the other thing that I, I really like, and it's not, it's not really a direct sales tool, but geez, it helps. Um, is um, Google Alerts. So I set up, I set up Google Alerts in my industry for um, uh, words like a Dyson vacuum problem or um, broken Electrolux or something like that. And it's normally somebody on a forum uh, saying, hey, I've got a Dyson DC08. Uh, it looks fine, but it doesn't suck. And so I go to that forum and um, I put in my two cents and say, hi, it's Alec from Vacuum Spot here. Um, what you're describing, I think, is a, a blocked filter. Um, it might be that if you just simply replace that $20 filter, um, you will have your problem fixed. And most of the time, it's not necessarily even in our country, so they're not going to directly buy from us. But the amount of times that people see that we help people on forums yeah. really help them, and we end up with sales, is amazing. And it, it comes so often, we... Um, we create a lot of YouTube videos um, to show people how to fix their own vacuum. And so many people ring up and say, hey, I saw that demonstration you did, and I'm going to buy the motor from you because we trust what you're doing. Yeah. So I think, I don't know if I'd call YouTube a tool, but geez, it, it's, a, it's an effective strategy. It's a pretty good learning tool or you know, education tool. Yeah. What's, and I, I have one final question, and I'm really interested. I think the audience will be interested in hearing the the answer uh, that you have for this. But before I ask, I want you to just tell us a little bit more about Vacuum Spot, what you're working on now, what you're excited about. Okay. Um, <laughs> as I said, I'm a, I'm a chicken counter, so um, I'm working on some big stuff. Um, we at the moment are looking at how we can repl replicate sorry, what we're doing in Australia and just doing the same thing in another country. New Zealand is on our radar now. Um, we're about two weeks away from um, opening up sales channel to uh, New Zealand. Um, we're also looking at, um, of course, like any business, we've got to keep our costs down. So we're looking at um, getting some of our stuff from China. So, you know, shipping bags and all that sort of stuff. So that's new for us. That's exciting. Um, on the radar a couple of years from now, that's America. That's England. Um, we want to take this to the really big places. And, um, yeah, I think... I think we're going to do it. I think we're going to make millions and millions doing it that way. What are the popular items that people typically go to your site for? Oh, God. Um, our most popular product is uh, a Miele vacuum bag. So exciting. I just love that product. Um, <laughs> Very sexy. <laughs> no. Oh, isn't it? Um, look, they go to our, st our site because we've got stuff that the others don't stock. So motors and uh, circuit boards. Our mm -hmm. most popular stuff is definitely the vacuum bags and the mm -hmm. vacuum filters. But honestly, looking at analytics, anything that says vacuum cleaner spare parts, that's us. Got it. So I have one last question for you, Alec. And my final question is, 
you work with your wife. Tell us what it's like to work with a spouse. <laughs> What's a good um, story you have for that? Oh, uh, look. Uh, <laughs> we, we actually used to work together and um, many years ago. And uh, we, we, we had to stop. Um, she, left, <laughs> she left the business I was working in because I was a mongrel. Um, she, <laughs> she, she hated it. Um, we, we now, as of December, we work together, but with 10 years of marriage under our belts now. So we know how we work. So it's different now. She is the rudder that guides my ship. Um, she is always telling me to just slow down because it was, we actually met when I was selling Kirby's back in the day. And um, we had a truckload of them, like a literal ute load of these things. And we had a good sales day. And um, so in a, in, a, in a hot, just a rash of emotion, I rung up the boss and said, look, send me another 25. I'm going to sell them. And he's like, really? And he had an American accent, which I can't do. But he was like, wow, man, that's so cool. Yeah, I'm sending those up. That's pretty good. And, oh, it's awesome. It's awesome. But we practically sold none of them. We had to actually clear out one of the rooms in the house just to house these vacuums. And um, ever since then, Kerry's been really good at reminding me about that room full of Kirby's that um, we didn't sell and didn't need. So, um, yeah, I don't know. It, it, it can be great. It wasn't initially, but it is now. So um, as long as you learn, like with all yeah. things, how to work together, it's going to be awesome. Yeah. And so now I love working with my wife. Yeah, but it you'll, nev not. you'll never live that one down, though. No, 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 no. It gets mentioned so many times, and at every dinner party we go to, she's like, do not order another room of Kirby's. <laughs> well, Alec, I really appreciate it. Thank you. I learned a lot. Where, where can people find, just uh, tell us where we can find you. What's the website? Okay, so it's Vacuum Spot. That's V-A-C-U-U-M-S-P-O-T dot com dot A-U. And where can and people thank you? Is there like a contact form if someone wants to yeah, reach out? Yeah, definitely. There's an About Us page where um, they can send us an email. They can hit me up on YouTube. On Twitter, I'm Vacuum Guru. Um, look, honestly, all they've got to do is search Vacuum Spot and they'll find me. All right. Well, thank you, Alec. I really appreciate it. Wonderful to talk to you from the Down Under. Thank you.